Hey guys, what's up? This is Doc Six Millimeter, a man size target, and we're going to be talking to, uh, today about an interesting uh, little compact nine millimeter, the Walter PPQ. There's been a lot of talk about this new pistol that's came out here recently, and it, it's definitely an interesting one. Uh, it's pretty comparable in size to a Glock 19, um, and in my opinion, may be one of the best compact pistols out there. Uh, it, it has some neat features that kind of separates it from some of the other designs out there. Um, overall, it, it, it's a pretty handy little gun. The weight on it isn't too bad. The magazine capacity isn't too bad. And it, it's a pretty sweet, sweet little rig. Uh, so, kind of some things that I kind of see this pistol, kind of what it could be used for, is definitely uh, it, it could be used as a concealed carry gun. It's a little big for my taste. But I think with the right holster, it could be concealed. The taper on the slide makes this thing seem a little bit narrower than it actually is, but it's still uh, within the range of what I would consider carryable, along with its weight and overall size. So some of the differences between the two. The PPQ has an ambidextrous slide release. It also has an ambidextrous magazine release which maybe you like this style, maybe you don't. For me, it's the same as my PPS that I normally conceal carry. So, it doesn't bother me at all. The magazines both come with a 15 round mag. Anything to add? Uh, no, I don't think so. Here's, uh, I, I think that these two actually real com compare to each other uh, pr pretty nicely. One thing I do like about the PPS, and this is uh, different than the Glock, and I wish Glock did this as well, is they do have some pretty decent forward cocking serrations and I, I don't know about you how, you how you charge the gun but I find myself a lot of times grabbing here uh, for whatever reason I don't I don't know why um, I kind of wish they would have left this Walters logo out of the, the serrations there because it's not as good on one side as it is on the other but but uh, but I, I do really like those and the other thing I really like about this gun is if you are a lefty it's I mean it's set up perfect for you it has the ambi uh, slide lock and also magazine uh, release. So I think as far as a left-handed person that's looking for kind of a mid-size gun in 9 or 40, this is definitely one they need to look into. Um, the, the other ergos on the gun, I, I think, you, you know, this tapered, tapered slide gives it a nice sleek look, uh, especially it uh, kind of compared to the maybe more antiquated design of the Glock, which is kind of more just boxy. Uh, from the front to the back. So there's a few things that's different uh, in comparing it to the 19. The sight radius is about the same, maybe a little bit better. The one thing uh, that I do notice different in the sighting system is, I don't know if we can line this up here for you, but there's a little bit less air in between the front post and the rear post. Uh, with the Glock and so I mean I think it's maybe for some people at least my eyes it may be easier to line up a more precision shot with it I, I mean I think there it's a good set of combat sights that are adjustable which I like and I'm sure there's side options I'm not I'm not real familiar with them there are side options and the back comes adjustable with a screwdriver which is nicer than the PPS that I got I had to use a drift pin and correct that um, so far this one seems dead nut straight out of the factory um, I've used it several times and I've been really, really precise with it. And you know, the one thing that um, not a, I, I think some newer gun designs are doing nowadays is they're making this rear sight more kind of squared off. And, you, you know, I think the thinking behind the manufacturer doing this, at least I think, is so that if you are using one hand to charge the gun, you know, you can catch this on some clothes, a belt or something like that to charge it uh, for whatever reason. I don't know if that's really that realistic, but I mean, it, it potentially could happen, so it's nice to have that, I think, in a set of sights. And my understanding on the front side is that from the underneath, you can unscrew it and replace it, and that's all it, that's all it takes to replace it, so it's pretty pretty nice, so if you get a set of night sights or something like that, you can pretty well do it yourself. Uh, yeah, man size target, which one of these guns do you think is wider, the PPQ or the 19? I think if you, by the time you compare the Ambi slide release, I'll bet the PPQ is slightly wider. It looks narrower because it it's does. tapered, but I, I think we'd have to get uh, something to measure it, which right. I think we just so happen to have. I think we do. And I think one thing that's kind of interesting about this 
is optically the, the PPQ looks a lot, a lot slimmer. And uh, let's see if we can get some measurements. And we'll do this clock here first. And uh, and I'm going to get it on the uh, the slide lock. I'm trying to get a good measurement there. Uh, I may have moved it. 1.19 is what I'm coming out at. I think the stock says 1.18 is kind of what they say. And I may be moving this a little bit. I'm trying to get it off of there. 1.16. And then when we go, I was kind of curious on this too. Kind of at your widest point. One point one two. Then we go with the ambi slide stops. One point three five. So it's it, it it is significantly wider when you take into account both slide stops. Um, but without measuring that, or I don't know if we can measure one kind of cattywampus like that and get an idea. Your width is, is pretty close to the same. So I think it's a little bit of an optical illusion based on that slide taper. But these guns are, are pretty similar in size. Uh, I think in all actuality, carry-wise, I don't think you're going to notice that extra width of that, of that slide stop. And the, the one thing I do like is at least they made it pretty low profile because I, I hate the... The, the guns that really have obnoxious big slide stops because I, for the most part how I train or how I shoot is I use the whole slide to rack it uh, when I come to slide lock. Uh, occasionally I hit it but I, I don't always and, and I think on Glocks their, their design which is also very low profile unless you get the extended uh, Glock 34 or 35 uh, slide catch uh, there from what I understand for talking with Glock they're not even they don't even recommend that you use that as a slide drop. Um, they call it a slide stop, and you're supposed to rack the slide to chamber another round after a reload. So that is what it is. Um, what do you think about the ergonomics on this gun there, man size target, compared to the Glock 19? Uh, and this boils down to opinion. I personally, I'm much more fond of the PPQ over the Gen 4 or any of the other Gen Glock 19s. Um, and I guess I can kind of talk about why I bought this. Originally, I mean, I didn't have a compact, so I was looking at getting one. And I was really hung up on this Gen 4 Glock 19 because I just, I was beginning to think it was just the best that was out there. I've shot docks, you know, I shoot well with it, but there's a few things that I just can't stand about Glock. Um, first of all, if you own a Glock, that means you're a loser. I would agree with that. Right, Doc? I would definitely agree with that. All jokes aside, Glock makes a heck of a firearm. I think its track record is not something that can be argued with. But my issues with the Glock, I cannot stand that angle of grip. Um, I can shoot with it, but it's not as natural. Um, I've, I can hit reliably, accurately, but it just takes a little bit more effort. It's not as fluid for me. Um, and I, I do not care for that. I'm also in the middle of eating some humble pie because I was never a fan of striker fires. Um, somehow in my head, I had it in my head that, you know, it needed to have a hammer. Probably like the previous generation felt like it needed to have a cylinder with a revolver. Um, I got this PPS and I've been nothing but impressed with it. It has been one of the best firearms that I've ever handled. And so I decided when I saw this PPQ had come out, I looked and it had a great angle. The ergonomics are awesome. One of the other deals that I don't like on Glock is that it's a half cock setup, which means that in my experience, the, the trigger is sort of spongy. Whereas on this PPQ, it's, it's a full cock setup. So that the trigger, the take up, you can feel right where it starts stiffening up and you know right when it's going to go off. It's a really, really crisp trigger. And again, I, I've seen a lot of good shooters with Glock 26s, Glock 19s. I can shoot them pretty well. For me personally, it's just easier to be accurate when you have a really crisp trigger. And as I said, right out of the box, I've scored some uh, yeah. pr pretty good shots. Yeah.